In a few minutes, we'll look at actually making some balloon sculptures. But first, at this point, I want to underline what many experienced twisters have urged me to say. Please, they say, emphasize you mustn't allow anyone to think of you as just a balloon factory, churning out quickie figures by the hundred. But it doesn't take very much to give the children what they want. What they want most is to get something from you. And if you give them a list of just a few figures you can offer, they'll most likely accept that. So, at the very beginning of every engagement, take a moment to assess what you'll at least have a shot at doing for most of the crowd. If your ballooning time is too short to serve everyone, you'll certainly have to limit yourself to very simple figures. But if you have to stick to dogs and swords, you can still be the best entertainer in town if you make and deliver your dogs and swords with personality and flair. Develop some jokes and some patter to accompany each type of figure. We'll call this Carmen the dog, okay? We're going to go all the way down the thing, okay? All right, but you're That's not a dog. That's the secret. Right? No, you're okay. a giraffe. <laughs> you sure you're not a giraffe? <laughs> oh, excuse me, I'm sorry, you're a zebra. No. Well, what are you? I'm a human. A human? <laughs> I thought this was an animal party. <laughs> you guys are confusing me. All right, we're going to make a dog nose. And the dog ears. You seriously need a napkin, young lady. Why don't you get a napkin and wipe that mouth, all right? Good job. All right. And a dog neck. And dog front feet. And a long dog body. And a back feet. And a doggy tail, and we'll go. Whoop, 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 whoop. All right, Caroline, what are we gonna do for you? A balloon or a face? Okay. I tell you what, if anybody wants a face, why don't you see my man Ian right over here? You step around there. All right. What's your name? Olivia. And what kind of balloon would you like, Olivia? Short tail. Oh, you want that one? And what should I make out of it? A dog, a rabbit, a mouse, a sword, a snake? What do you think? I didn't say a or a giraffe, did I? A snake, a good one or a mean one? A mean one? All right, a mean But you can't scare your brothers and sisters and your parents with it. Now that's a rule. I am making a mean snake for Olivia. Let me get my mean snake marker, and we're going to give him a big frown and two little snaky eyes and a very unhappy snaky mouth and two long, savage, snaky teeth, and we're going to go snake! It's a snake! There you go. go hey, go scare some boys, Olivia. And here comes... A panda? You don't look anything like a panda. <laughs> oh, Amanda, I think you said you were Amanda. Oh, what no. are we going to make for you, oh, Amanda? No. I mean, Amanda? A balloon or a face? What do you think? Oh, no, no, no. A balloon. And would you like a, a sword, a snake, a rabbit, a mouse, a dog, a hat? Many uh, of those sound good? A sword. All oh, right, let's see what pushes the out of the way of a sword. The children aren't as concerned as you are with fantastic multi balloon figures unless you lead them to expect that by starting to work that way and finding that it's just too slow. Nothing breeds complaints faster than you did a 10 minute seven balloon sculpture for him, now why won't you do one for me? If you start doing small sculptures and find yourself with nothing to do later, you can start doing something spectacular. You may be uncomfortable with sticking to very basic figures, 
This goes for both balloons and face painting. There are many magicians and twisters and painters who approach their skill first as an art. They don't want to perform at all if they can't perform at the highest possible level. But creativity and skill are only part of the picture. Speed, or perhaps we'd better say efficiency, entertainment, and customer relations. Let any of these factors get out of balance and you'll be seen as a hack or a prima donna, or just a bad performer. You certainly won't get called back next year. If you want to keep their requests mostly within the limits of what you have to offer, give them a menu. Most picnics and holiday shows, you'll have as many little customers as you can handle in the allotted time. And if you let them ask for just anything that comes into their head, you may have to disappoint many of them if they ask for things that take too much time, or that you just can't figure out how to do, or they'll take forever to make up their mind. So simplify things. Either post a menu or tell them again and again what you can do. I have a sword, a snake, a rabbit, a mouse, a dog, or... Or a sword, a snake, a rabbit, a mouse, or a dog. <laughs> or a sword, or a rabbit. That's why kids' menus at restaurants usually only offer three or four items. So here is my menu. It's really quite basic, but I think you'll find it contains enough variety to please most kids. Anytime you deal with the public, there will be pressure. And how you handle it can make your job a pleasure or a pain. Patience is a quality all professional entertainers need, especially when dealing with children. Just smile sweetly and say that you're doing your best to please everybody. Sometimes you get an incredibly rude person who just won't be managed. You never know who it's going to be. A guy who just doesn't know how to take no for an answer to a grandma who insists she's got to get to her grandchild's birthday party and please make a dozen balloons for her to take away right now. I just point to my balloon rules sign, which is in plain view, and if that doesn't handle them, I can always hand them an empty 260 and say, you blow this up and I'll gladly twist it for you. And of course they never can. There are innumerable suggestions for keeping order, keeping people lined up so they know who's next, and all of them work for about two minutes. Then they fall apart and take much more effort to reestablish than they're worth. But people want to think that they're being treated fairly, that they're not in the midst of chaos. So in the midst of impending chaos, they cling to rules. Rules make them comfortable. So within the unavoidable chaos, I give them what rules I can. One, I do not give balloons to children who may put them in their mouth. You really can't have a child brought up to you who's already sucking on a pacifier or sitting in the stroller shoving his toys down his throat even as you speak to the parent and responsibly hand that child a balloon. Some parents are insistent and just won't listen to reason. Sometimes it helps to make them read the printed warning on the balloon bag. Okay. Well, the little kids are too young for balloons because they would put them in their mouths and choke on them and we wouldn't want that, would we? Here you go, Katie, that's for you. Sometimes, anything other than a direct no will go over better. It might be safer to wait until next year. Here's a trick that works in many situations. You say that you're not allowed to. You would, but it's not your decision. Your boss forbids it. You'll get fired. Your contract forbids you to. You're not insured for that. And sometimes you just have to make one for mommy and tell her sternly that the baby can look at it from a distance, but she mustn't let him handle it. Two, you must be here to get one. Otherwise, you get all sorts of, would you make one for my brother, he's way over there, and my sister who couldn't come today, and I'm going to go see my grandkids after the show, can you make some for them? Three, one balloon or face or tattoo per person. You can have another after everyone has been served once. Four, I decide who's next. Smiling people right away, pretty girls as soon as possible, annoying people later, maybe never. I'm only confident about keeping a line about three or four kids long. After the third or fourth kid, there's chaos. 
Every time the person in front of me moves away, I let them know. I'll take you next, and then you, and then her. And I can pick the order I want to take people in, and I can adjust it and admit a little kid whose father has been waiting a long time, or, or just doesn't understand about mines yet. Keep an overview of the crowd, and watch for very young children. Never let someone wait 40 minutes to find out they're not going to get a balloon. You don't have to single them out, just make a public announcement to the general crowd as to your rules. If I treat the disappointed kid with a little respect and apologize for the chain and ask him, would it be okay if I take this little guy next? He's been here a long time and I didn't see him. Or he's a little guy and doesn't understand how to wait yet. I can work someone out of order and usually the kid who has to wait will still be happy. Another big reason you might take someone out of turn is the popped balloon. While you're speaking to the crowd from time to time, remind them not to let the balloons touch the ground, because even the softest grass will tend to pop them. Now balloons are going to pop, and some of them are going to pop very soon after you've given them out. And kids are going to handle that disappointment in different ways. Some of them are going to appear right back at the head of the line they just left and expect a replacement. And you're going to have to decide what to tell them. Most children can live with being told you'll fix their broken balloon after everyone has been served once. For a very small child who's crying, bend the rules and replace his balloon right away. It doesn't cost you anything to apologize to the next kid in line and ask, would you mind if I fix his balloon? Whoa, well, not that one, huh? Yep. I was wrong! We're gonna... I lied! <laughs> well, uh, after I am well out of range... Hold on, I think well, that was the last one in that bag. If you're seeing a lot of pops on a hot day or when there's very dry grass, you might consider telling the crowd, my balloons are guaranteed to pop. If it doesn't pop, just bring it back and I'll pop it for you. And my last rule, when it's time for me to stop, I have to stop. Yes, really. I'm sorry if you came too late, I'll get to you first next year. Sometimes you may be tempted to do that inevitable just one more, and if there are only three or four kids nearby to beg for one more too, I might even do it. If, as I really prefer, I've back-timed it so the magic show is the end of my visit, I'll take the balloon supplies to my car, telling people I'll get back to balloons and faces if there's time after the magic show. And, of course, then there isn't time when the magic show's done and the supplies are all packed away. in our balloon bag here. To start with, balloons. 260 Q's, Qualitex is a fine brand. A pump. Some people blow them up by mouth. I used to be able to. Right now, I'm not ashamed to be using a pump. If you have other shapes of balloons, you'll want those in here. If you have uh, somebody working with you, another pump. And something to mark them with. I have a couple of colors of just magic markers. Some people recommend Sharpies for a fine point. I don't go into all that detail. I just find the magic markers good enough. Now let's make a couple of real quick, real fun balloons. Here's a jumping mouse. You make the beginning of a little mouse. The front end, the nose, the ears, the front feet. It's just like a really itty bitty dog with a long, skinny, uninflated portion for the mousy tail. But you just make the front half, leave a good bit of body, and then of course the long, skinny, mousy tail.
And then, when it's time to jump it, you put it between your fingers, circled like this, pull the tail, and release it. And boing, it's a jumping mouse. I shouldn't have to tell you this one. Swords. Once you make a sword for a boy, you're not going to be making anything else for boys and some of the girls for the rest of the day. It's practically cheating. Just twist the handle. Uh, sometimes you can do it in a bunch. Sometimes uh, uh, one side and then the other. If it's curved, it's a scimitar. And then present it with a little flair. Here's your sword. Da-da-da-da-da! Now, the important thing about a balloon hat is getting it to fit. You might actually want to measure it to the person's head. Blow up your 260 as far as it'll possibly go, make your best estimation or fit it to the person's head, and then you can trick it up with any extras you care to. Left plane, it's a football helmet.